Hey, welcome back to the RV Bug Out channel. I just wanted to give you guys a little update on what I've been up to. Uh, as you can see here, I built a rough model of uh, like a, it's a, this isn't a scale this model, but it's uh, a, the basic layout of the framing for the sauna slash RV bug out shelter. Um, obviously this would be if you were looking at it from the end would be like this. This being the floor down here and then uh, on this on these floors or on the interior and exterior walls uh, like here for instance um, the outside material will be herring boned across diagonally like this um, possibly to the center and then switching directions I still have to figure out all the herring bone because part of that herring bone business will be you uh, to utilize will to catch rainwater I'm currently working with a, a local uh, supplier that I mentioned that uh, <clears throat> is gonna he's supplying uh, it's got a nickel it's a tongue and groove siding basically uh, tongue and groove uh, one by six or he, he can do one by four as well but uh, one and by six uh, tongue and groove which has got a instead of it being a tight joint it has a nickel width gap on the exterior of it uh, which when it would be put on a herringbone pattern on the exterior it was in here uh, and if this was per se the sidewall not the I mean these are all identical or supposed to be but <clears throat> the rainwater that would be coming down here would be catched cat caught in the little nickel groove there the groove on the siding the outside siding and it'd be redirected so that I can collect any rainwater for general washing purposes like for the body and dishes and clothes and whatever and uh, that gives the person the ability to collect uh, water effortlessly because water is your biggest commodity and the biggest um, or the most important thing you need well, if you ain't got water you ain't long for this world son you have to have a good source of clean drinking water you can go without food for what is it like 30 days and you won't perish try to go without water for seven see what happens after after the first uh, I think it's like 24 hours you're gonna start getting a headache without going up going without water if you start to, you dehydrate really fast So with water being uh, the most important thing that I, I'm concerned about is I want to have a way, and because you go through so much of it, you know, not only personal consumption, but uh, even the cooking of foods takes a lot of water if you're boiling. And um, general cleanliness, like you got to stay clean in order to stay healthy. Uh, you know if you're living in a pigsty then there's all sorts of germs that you got to be considered that you're exposed to all the time so water is important and that was my point but the point of this video was just to give you guys a little gander at this now like I said this isn't made to scale and it isn't made very nice but I explained in a video earlier that I'm a tactile person I, I learn best when my hands are getting involved and what I'm trying to figure out here now I, I think I haven't 
this isn't positive yet, but I'm pretty sure this is the way that these these uh, sections will be put together. And then, like I mentioned, there will be herringbone pattern on the inside as well. This allowed me to use shorter boards for one thing. And um, uh, that way then I can, I can buy shorts. I don't have to buy eight foot long pieces then or whatever, right? Uh, and the, the other thing I was going to mention like that isn't on this model yet is that there will be between each one of these will be a separator right like um, I like to do in floor joicing where they put a piece in between each one of these on, on the floor joists to stiff to tie all these joists together in the center and there will be one in there so when there is one in there this it'll allow me for shorter pieces these represent two by fours um, and again I do, it's they're not to scale but uh, this would be a two by four on edge right and you know the inch and a half going this way and the four inch or three and a half inch going this way across this this direction and this is the inch and a half correct so those will be all two by four on edge is what they, those represent and these as well will be two by four but again this isn't built to scale but I needed to put together something physical I can think better when I'm doing physical I can think about okay if this is a floor panel and I want to have a shower in the shower side well I want the shower do I want it to come out of the roof out of the ceiling or is it on that wall that 45 wall that's it's you know the half ceiling you might call it is do I want the shower to come out of there well this would be lower a uh, lower point point to put the shower because then you don't have to pump if the water is in the bottom tanks per se you got to lift that water that many feet well this is from this point to this point is you have to lift the water eight feet but from here to there you only have to lift the water six feet or six and a half or something like that if you get my drift if you understand what I'm trying to get at so the B building a physical model like this give, gives me the opportunity to answer some of those questions like well okay so if my shower head's going to go here then and where's my source pump going to be now do I do I bring it straight out the wall out that way to connect to source I haven't decided yet or does it come through this plate and go, come down here and come down to the bottom plate is this where my pump is going to be situated I haven't answered those questions yet but this gives me an opportunity to explore that also about just the physical makeup of the construction like okay the, if these represent two by fours then I'm gonna recess these into each one of these two by fours I'm gonna cut them into a groove so that they fit in there like say uh, three-eighths of an inch on each side so that they're cut into a groove so that those are really solid when those are put together now I was considering of building this thing without screws or nails gluing everything uh, gluing it and then uh, putting it together with wooden dowels as opposed to a screw or a nail thinking that okay this thing's on a trailer now there's going to be a lot of forces from side to side when it's on the trailer so this area the base of this these three particular sections they're going to be under a tremendous amount of side loading which means that these joints here are going to be under tremendous strain to support the rest of the building right when it's going down the road because of the um side to side motion say you go around a corner or or the trailer dips on one side or the other side and this being the farthest point away from the fulcrum well that means that this has the most leverage over this particular base right so this has a lot of leverage there's a lot of weight above this point here which gives 
huge leverage to this joint and this joint this one as well right those four joints get a lot of stress they're under a lot of stress when it's on the road when it's sitting the the stress on it is only the weight coming down on these those four joints but when it's on the road being transported the, the stresses on that go up exponentially as how shitty the road is or how fast you're driving around corners right so this is the reason why I built this in a because uh, I'm a, like I mentioned earlier I'm a tactile person this gives me an opportunity to see how I can build these sections as well as the next thing I'm considering here is how do I attach the front section the panel where the door is how do I attach that to these walls